So uh, let's start it off. We also wanted to give people some time uh, to get tuned in, but <laughs> I guess our technical issues automatically did that. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, Tobias and I, we're from uh, Net Company, and um, we uh, would like to give you a presentation of, uh, of how we do Net Company uh, projects um, in, uh, in, in, in different areas, uh, in, in not only Denmark, but also the other countries we're in. Um, we want to go into a little bit about who Net Company is, uh, which processes and tools we have at our disposal, uh, which we have refined over time and gotten a lot of experience in. And uh, then we're going to deep dive into uh, one of the projects uh, that uh, Tobias and I we're um, currently at, uh, where we do this uh, on a daily basis and uh, just want to give you uh, some insights into how we actually um, deliver this um, in real life. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so that's basically it. As you know, uh, there is uh, some latency. Um, so if you have any questions, of course, we'll uh, try and, and catch them as soon as we see them. Um, uh, and then uh, we'll see if we can, uh, we can answer them uh, going on. So uh, just to give you a quick walkthrough um, the agenda. So first we'll give a, uh, a, a short presentation about uh, Tobias and I and who we are, and then a little bit about Net Company uh, uh, and who we, who we are as a company. Uh, then we'll go into uh, what we call the Net Company methodology, which is uh, how we structure our projects and uh, make sure that we actually can deliver. Um, and from there, We'll then go into um, to our customer, uh, Eo Johansson, uh, which is a, a company uh, from, from Denmark, uh, who we do a lot of uh, great work for, uh, and see, uh, look into how, uh, w which uh, kind of customer it is, uh, how the project uh, is, what we have delivered for them, how the organization and the team um, is, uh, is, is currently uh, at the project now. And then Tobias is going to go into uh, like a regular or maybe a, a, a day as it could be uh, from uh, Tobias's point of view uh, and, and like the day-to-day -day things that he does uh, from, from uh, start in the morning until uh, the end of the day. Uh, and then we'll try and sum it up by, um, by coming with some of uh, the reasons uh, uh, which we think is uh, is really great uh, in net company and why we uh, work uh, in net company. Um, and then in the end we'll have a, a Q and A session. Um, of course we have put the Q and A session in the end, but if you have some questions going on, just uh, shoot them. Um, of course it'll take maybe 15, 20 seconds before it reaches us. Um, but uh, we'll see if it's if it makes sense to answer them going on uh, during uh, the presentation. Uh, but if it's uh, some more content, some more uh, some bigger discussions that we need to do, then we'll maybe park it for for the Q and A session in the end. Cool. But let's uh, just start uh, with Tobias. Yes, uh, my name is Tobias, uh, and I'm a consultant at at Net Company, uh, and I'm working here. For here for two years now, um, and uh, my background is uh, that I have a master's degree in information and communication technologies from uh, Lund University in Sweden. Uh, I'm currently working for uh, AU Hansen, as we have talked about, uh, and that's a project that we will uh, talk a little bit more about and deep uh, deep dive into uh, in a bit. But uh, first, Rushan will uh, obviously introduce himself and uh, talk a little about uh, Net Company in general. Yeah, so my name is uh, Roshan. Uh, I'm, uh, I have a master's degree in digital media engineering, which I uh, completed in 2013. And then I, uh, I applied for, for Net Company and was hired in uh, January 14. And I've, act uh, I've been in Net Company since. Uh, and the last two years, I've been at uh, AO Johansson um, together with uh, Tobias and have been uh, the project manager um, at that customer and that project um, for uh, approximately two years now. 
Um, I just recently moved uh, moved to Aalborg. Uh, Tobias is uh, located in Copenhagen, which I was before as well. Uh, but I now work remote from Aalborg. But uh, in in the current Corona situation, it's not that uh, different for me. Um, uh, obviously, uh, even though the situation is not the best uh, currently. Yes. Then I'll just go on to um, to to Net Company. Uh, and uh, who we are. So uh, Net Company is uh, is one of the fastest growing uh, IT uh, consultancies, uh, not only uh, in Denmark but also in the Nordics and maybe even in uh, in Europe. Uh, and we uh, always try to deliver uh, the best solutions um, that we can and and have a focus on the deliveries and delivering on uh, in budget and and time agreed with the customer. So, um, of course, um, we have had a huge growth uh, since we uh, since we started in uh, in year 2000. I, uh, as I told you, I uh, joined in 2014, uh, where we were, I think, uh, a little more than 400 people. Uh, and now we're uh, more than 2500, at least since um, the year end of 2019 so uh, so that's uh, that's a pretty uh, pretty great uh, growth and and also we have expanded uh, geographically as well so that's uh, that's pretty cool to be a part of one of uh, one of the very nice things uh, in net company is that uh, we have a really great focus on uh, on the talent in uh, in that company, so meaning the talented people that we hire and make sure that uh, they uh, they are challenged the the, the correct way. Uh, it's basically what we are made of, and uh, the DNA of Net Company. It's having the 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 best resources the, that we can have, and and also making sure that they develop uh, both professionally and personally, so they can uh, keep on getting more responsibility and and lifting. Uh, the heavy work in uh, in the projects. So um, so so it's really c cool that we um, are not afraid of uh, hiring uh, younger people uh, and more inexperienced uh, people. But uh, are really sh we are pretty sure that uh, having the correct focus and the correct experience with uh, from the colleagues, we can uh, they can rise to the occasion. So. Uh, another great thing about Net Company is that uh, we are basically just all uh, IT people. Uh, it is uh, always IT people, leading IT people. So in our case, uh, I started as a consultant as well uh, and did the same work as uh, the uh, the other consultants in my team uh, and also ge in general in Net Company. Uh, and now I of course lead the team, and it's just a benefit that uh, that the person leading the team also knows uh, the details about uh, about the actual work being done uh, in the project um, so so that's also a, a really cool thing yes so now I'm uh, going into uh, the specifics about how we actually deliver uh, our projects in in net company which we call the net company methodology but first I'm gonna start with uh, our delivery culture and the approach which is uh, divided into three parts. So we have uh, the people, as I told you before, which make it happen. Uh, we need the correct comp, uh, we need the right competencies, we need the right minds uh, in order for us to be able to deliver as we do. The second uh, part is uh, the culture, uh, which may where we ensure that we have the correct. Uh, uh, mindset when we work, we have the correct motivation that people take uh, ownership uh, of the tasks and the projects uh, that we lead, and 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 that's uh, also very important. And the third part is uh, is the structure. So that's basically how uh, we structure the projects uh, that we work with. Um, it can, we can have several different types of projects and several types of uh, of customers, but we still need some 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 kind of a structure based on our experiences that uh, so we can make sure that we follow uh, a plan um, and and uh, that we don't get too many surprises uh, during uh, the project um, and the third thing 
um, the structure is actually what the net company methodology is uh, in our delivery culture, which I'm gonna I'm gonna go through. So the net company methodology is basically just a library. It's basically like a toolbox. You uh, you have a, a lot of different tools at your disposal, and and you just pick the ones that you that you need in a in a given situation uh, or a given phase in in the project. Um, and just to give some some ideas of what it can be, it can be stuff like checklists, it can be guidelines and, and best practices, which we have uh, refined over time based on uh, previous pr successful uh, projects uh, and so on. Uh, so that's basically what uh, the methodology is. Uh, you could see the methodology as um, when you need to structure uh, the way that you reach a destination, then then you may have uh, different routes in order to to reach that destination. And um, the different tools we have uh, in in the net company methodology is basically which route we we can take we can take. Uh, so depending on which tools we take, we may end up in the de destination in different ways. Uh, the methodology is there to make sure that we don't get sidetracked too much and ensure that we actually reach the destination in the end. Uh, so by having these different tools and best practices, we know, okay, this we should go uh, some kind of in, in this way or that way. Um, so the route uh, or the, the project plan um, is, is, of course, planned by uh, the project manager. But it's it's a team effort uh, to to actually execute that and make sure that we reach the destination by following the plan uh, as uh, efficient as possible. So if we look into the structure of the methodology, um, in in the top box we have uh, the project that we need to deliver. Uh, that can be uh, divided into several iterations, maybe just a couple or maybe more. Uh, and each iteration is um, has a, a, a list of tools um, in in the net company methodology which can be used. So it can be if you need to define some some design, come up with some concepts, uh, do some analysis, implementation, or whatsoever. Then we have a lot of tools to to support that. Then each iteration consists of uh, multiple activities uh, which can be that you need to write uh, write some code, you need to think up the architecture or something like that. And then each activity will then also result in a deliverable, uh, which is what the activity actually produces. So for example, if it's architecture, it can be an architecture uh, design document and, and so on that needs to be approved by, uh, by the customer. Um, and for both the activity and the deliverable, of course, there is always a responsible uh, person uh, for that, either in the team or it could even be uh, in, uh, in the customer's team as well. So if we look into a little bit about uh, our disciplines and how we work uh, in general in, uh, in that company, we usually uh, call uh, the process that we uh, follow uh, the model uh, agile with control. So we try to to take uh, a little bit uh, of the good things from uh, from different worlds. Um, so if we briefly go through the different layers, so everything is uh, done in in iterations uh, and is uh, repetitive. So uh, in the upper layer we have the strategy, which is something you may uh, revisit. Uh, once a year or maybe once, uh, I don't know, X years. And then you, for the strategy, you may then, uh, the strategy for, for the partnership with the customer and the project, you may then split that into to multiple releases, which is what you actually deliver uh, to the customer. Um, and then each release uh, can then be split up into different iterations, which may um, span from, from two to four weeks. Um, and each iteration may not deliver something in production, but may at least uh, get something into a test environment where the the team and and the customers they can um, they can test the things done in each uh, iteration. So we always have uh, some testing and and everything going on. And then on the daily basis, we have uh, activities like stand up and what we do every day. And then we have uh, activities that we do even uh, multiple uh, times uh, at a day, uh, stuff like 
uh, integrating the code uh, to a common uh, environment, deploying uh, to environments, building, and, and so on. So everything is uh, in the different layers are agile, but just in different uh, layers and, and different schedules. Then we have the deliverables, which is uh, produced by uh, the activities that we do uh, in our work. Uh, and they are basically just what uh, guidelines for what we uh, what we need to deliver uh, and and also how that it can be organized so a good example is uh, the one uh, on the right that when you need to do some let's say when you need to create a web shop or, or something like that then we have some some uh, some tools that we know that you usually uh, need or you, you can use if you if you want to if it makes sense for that project so ex an example could be the user interface design so we have these um, we have these deliverables which helps us uh, force to think if uh, we need those uh, and if we don't then of course we just uh, we just omit it and uh, and look into some of the other ones and of course all of this is uh, the structure is uh, refined uh, through the different projects that we have and then when we start a new project we need to use that to uh, to actually come up with the project plan for a new project right so that's where we know uh, we have an idea of this is how the methodology is this is how it is structured these activities and so on we then apply it to the customer and the situation we're in uh, and then we from that we uh, get uh, a project plan with suggestions for what needs to be done um, and when and uh, of, uh, fortunately for that as well, for generating that project plan, we also have some, some templates and guidelines to help us uh, produce that. Great, so that was uh, like basically um, the, the more theoretical stuff that we have about uh, how we, we deliver a project in that company, um, uh, which is based on uh, years of experience that we have. Uh, from uh, the various and many uh, projects. Uh, now we're gonna go into um, an example project that we have prepared, uh, which is Air Johansson, um, which uh, Tobias and I are currently at right now. So Air Johansson is uh, one of the leading wholesalers in uh, the construction uh, industry in uh, the Nordic countries. Their key business is, uh, is aimed at uh, the B2B market, uh, meaning professionals in Denmark uh, uh, mainly. And uh, they have uh, different uh, areas they are responsible for, and also uh, they have a lot of products that they, uh, that they, um, uh, that they offer uh, to, to their many customers. They have approximately 700 employees uh, spread out in, in, uh, in the 50 plus stores in, in Denmark, Sweden and uh, Estonia. And they started up with the, the physical stores uh, and, uh, and then we have helped them uh, on, on the digital journey they have been, and, uh, been on and which they still are on. Uh, so we have been a partner uh, for them and a trusted advisor for, for several years. We have uh, developed um, a lot of their business critical solutions um, and it can span uh, right from the web shop AODK, which is uh, their main uh, online uh, channel for, for selling their products uh, all the way uh, to, to the app, uh, which is used as uh, self-service functionality in, uh, in the stores. Um, and a great thing uh, from this partnership uh, is that uh, we have helped uh, AO uh, make the online orders a, a major part of the business uh, um, today, uh, which is uh, really cool. So if we go into a little more detail and see how the project is uh, organized, uh, as you may see uh, a lot of, uh, in a lot of different projects as well, we have a steering committee with uh, some people from AO, and then we have uh, Thomas uh, there as well uh, from a net company. Then we have uh, the project management group uh, with uh, some people from AO as well, who are responsible for the different departments at, um, uh, at, at, at the, in their company. And then we have uh, me uh, as the project manager from, from NetCompany. 
Uh, and then we have uh, four different departments uh, at AO that we work closely uh, together with. Uh, the sales department, marketing department, digital uh, development, who uh, are responsible for uh, the solutions uh, that we uh, have created for them, uh, the online solutions. And then AO IT, which is the, their internal uh, IT department for some of the other solutions that they have as well. And then we have uh, the NC development team, the core team, uh, who, who does the daily work um, in the project, which uh, Tobias is also um, a part of. So if we look into the people that we have in our team and uh, the roles and responsibilities that we have. So as I told you before, uh, I am the project manager uh, in, the, in the project. And uh, I have uh, responsibilities such as, uh, of course, leading the project, doing the project planning, uh, making sure that we have the, the right people in the project based on what needs to be done and which requests we get from the customer. Uh, and then I also um, am responsible for, for, uh, for the actual customer and the relationship we have there and making sure that uh, we, of course, keep uh, continuing with the uh, with the engagement that we have there. Then we have uh, some of uh, the more experienced uh, technical people, uh, which is Trolls and Rasmus. They are both uh, lead developers uh, from our uh, from uh, the APS um, business, which is uh, which is re res mainly responsible for for the maintenance work that we do in in Net Company, and they have a lot of different um, technical technical responsibilities um, such as being a technical lead in terms of quality check uh, quality quality assurance and all the work that we do um, making uh, making sure that we um, are aligned on the maintenance work that we need to do together with uh, AO AO is what we call uh, AO Johansson uh, and um, and incidents and and so on and then we have uh, these four people uh, also in the team. So we have uh, Andreas, who is uh, a senior architect uh, in the team. So um, he is uh, the primary lead on uh, the architecture and making sure that the different components, uh, the different solutions, uh, they, uh, um, they talk together as they should. Um, and also make sure that we use the correct technologies, platforms and uh, and so on and takes the lead on that and apart from that he also has a responsibility for for some of uh, some of the business areas in um, in at the customer as well and then we have uh, the three consultants Casper, uh, Tobias and Mass who uh, basically together with Andreas as well do uh, do new uh, project work, uh, new features that needs to be done, and they uh, each of them also have uh, different um, different business areas that they are responsible for, and also have different contacts that they uh, uh, work together with at uh, at AO as well. So that was uh, a little bit about uh, AO Hansen and um, and the the work that we do there. Uh, uh, in, in like the, the higher level uh, and then Tobias will go through uh, more uh, practically what, what actually happens uh, every day um, and uh, why it's uh, awesome to work there. Uh, yes, so basically to give a little bit of uh, practical t context to everything that we're talking about, uh, I will try to kind of go through a typical day for myself at work uh, to give you guys an idea of how it could be to be an employee and a consultant at, at Net Company. Um, so at the start of the day, I, I obviously just, uh, arrive at the AO office, uh, usually at least when there is uh, not uh, Corona going on uh, in, uh, in the world. Uh, but uh, we are located in a separate office building uh, next to the uh, AO's head office and uh, their distribution center. Um, and uh, we share this building with the AOS internal uh, IT department, uh, where we sit on the on the bottom floor uh, together with our uh, closest contacts uh, at AO, which is uh, their uh, digital development team uh, that we mentioned before, uh, or it's uh, called digital utveckling uh, in Danish. Um, and this, of, of course, means that we are sitting very close to uh, close by to them uh, physically, uh, and that's a great way 
to work so tightly with with them uh, as it's often just a matter of like moving uh, moving a couple of meters uh, to get to talk to them to ask questions or clarifying some requirements uh, or things like that. Uh, it's also super good for for our team spirit uh, at AO uh, because we can kind of get a shared feeling of that we are working together with AO there rather than rather than we just work for them, uh, basically. So it's uh, it's really nice. Um, obviously, right now it's a little bit harder these days where we kind of have to rely on teams for meetings and so on. But generally, that has actually worked out really fine uh, for us uh, both within the team and uh, together with AO. Uh, but I do miss uh, the daily contact with uh, with the team, uh, with my colleagues, and with AO. Uh, and I kind of don't really like that I need to set up my uh, my bedroom as a part time office. It's uh, it's not too good. Um, but yeah, we are getting there. It's a struggle for everyone. Um, but yeah, after getting settled, uh, it's time for uh, uh, the most important day of the morning, of course, and that's uh, getting coffee. So uh, I join uh, the morning coffee train with uh, with the rest of the team uh, before I actually uh, get get to, to work. Uh, so then I obviously check my emails and my notifications that I might have. Uh, I get an overview of uh, the tasks that I have assigned to myself, uh, make sure uh, if I can see that any status has been updated, uh, if uh, AO has made any comments to anything or if my team members have done that, uh, just to make sure if there's something that I need to basically take take action uh, in immediately uh, during the morning. Um, every morning we also have a daily 15-minute stand-up meeting. Um, and uh, usually we are actually standing up during our stand-up meeting, not sitting down as we do on this image here. I guess that Corona is making all of us a little bit lazy. Um, but uh, on the daily stand-up, basically uh, everyone in the team gives a short status on uh, what they have uh, been up to since the last stand-up we had uh, and what they are planning to do uh, for the rest of the day. Uh, this is also the optimal opportunity for people to, to ask for help if they are stuck with anything. Um, uh, we typically don't go into details on the stand-up on problems that we have, but it's a super quick way to uh, basically find if there is a colleague among us that has uh, some previous experience with the same kind of problem or just some expertise on whatever you're working on so that you can basically be sure that you won't be stuck for, uh, for the first part of the day. Um, we also have a few other uh, recurring meetings in the team. Uh, once a week, we uh, extend our stand-up meeting uh, where we have a, a short uh, demo meeting uh, where one uh, team member introduces something that would be relevant to, to the others, others in the team. Uh, it could, for example, be a feature that has recently been implemented or some reusable component that someone has created or some other general uh, technology that uh, the rest of the team should be aware of. Um, so it's kind of a really casual and nice way of uh, sharing some knowledge uh, within the team. Uh, we also have something that we call internal status, which is basically just a longer status meeting once a month where we discuss uh, the current release cycle and the upcoming deployment that we will have for that release. Uh, and once a week we have uh, estimation meetings uh, that I will uh, get back to a little bit uh, later or rather soon uh, when we talk about how we estimate things uh, on the project. Um, but for the rest of the day, uh, I usually uh, try to get to work on my individual tasks, uh, which can range from, uh, range from a lot of different things at Net Company. Um, for our product, we typically have two different kinds of tasks, you could say. Um, either I work on some, some main maintenance cases uh, or tasks, which uh, can be uh, things like bug fixes or improving uh, some already implemented functionality that, that needs to be uh, working better. Um, uh, but otherwise, uh, I'm most of the time actually I'm working on what I sometimes call feature projects, uh, which is typically new features or uh, a little bit uh, larger uh, tasks that we kind of dis uh, divide into subtasks uh, so that it kind of makes up as a mini project within uh, the larger project at AO. Um, and uh, uh, no matter if it's uh, a maintenance task or if it's a product task, they kind of follow the same cycle or li the life cycle is kind of similar. Uh, so I will try to kind of dig into uh, all of these uh, steps individually and uh, briefly explain uh, what we do for each part and uh, in our daily work. 
so the first step of, uh, of a task is uh, analysis and estimation. Um, this often includes that we uh, are uh, talking with our customer about their requirements uh, and together with them we come up with uh, some solutions, suggestions uh, and so on and we really try to find out exactly what it's uh, need that needs to be done uh, so that we can uh, can give uh, as precise estimates as, as possible. Uh, so when we've figured out what needs to be done, uh, we uh, need to uh, provide estimates on how long we uh, think that the different tasks will take. Uh, and the process is a little bit different depending on if it's one of these maintenance tasks or if it's uh, uh, like a larger project. Um, for maintenance estimations, uh, we have this weekly estimation meeting that I uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, it, what it means is that we basically have three team members uh, that we sit down together and uh, play some uh, uh, planning poker. Uh, so we have a list of tasks uh, and we take one task at a time. Uh, and on, on some kind of countdown, <laughs> everyone gives their best guesstimate on uh, uh, how long it will take to solve. And uh, then we look through the SMS together and if there are any big deviations or anything like that, we basically discuss and defend our estimates and see uh, if we can't come to, to a nice uh, common agreement or we will always come to a common agreement on, on an estimate. <clears throat> uh, but for new feature products, the estimation uh, uh, phase is a little bit different. Then we typically assign one or two team members to uh, uh, do a deeper dive into what needs to be, be made. And uh, we split the uh, split the big tasks up into multiple uh, individual tasks and estimate them individually. Uh, and this typically requires us to uh, kind of dig into uh, our current code base as well to see if we can find some reusable components or similar uh, that can be utilized uh, within the product to to make it uh, better and faster. Um, Yes, and for both maintenance uh, products, uh, maintenance tasks and products, uh, AO will always have to approve our estimates uh, since at the end of the day, those are the ones that paid for the work that we do. So it's good to have real price as precise estimates as possible. Um, yes, then uh, we go on to planning, uh, which is something that is obviously happening continuously every day and every week and every month. Um, uh, but it's the product manager that is kind of responsible for allocating members to, to either products or maintenance. Uh, so uh, Roshan usually basically gives us a chunk of hours and say that we're going to spend this much uh, on maintenance and this much on a given project. Uh, but then it's up to the individual team member to uh, kind of prioritize their tasks and uh, in which order they're going to carry out and make sure that uh, it's planned appropriately. Um, Yes, as, and I, as I touched a little bit on, on earlier, uh, when we're implementing something a little bit bigger uh, for AO, like new features, for example, um, we usually consider that as a, as a mini product or a feature product. Uh, and typically it's uh, one to three members that are responsible for such a project, which uh, typically spans uh, one or more release cycles. Uh, and as a new team member, uh, it's... Uh, mostly common that you get assigned to such a product from, from the start so that you can uh, basically be introduced in our way of working uh, within a product at net company by our experienced colleague. Um, and as, uh, as you get more knowledge about AO and our methodology in, uh, uh, in general, um, you will also be responsible for such products yourself. Uh, and as we saw in the previous slide that Roshan uh, talked about, uh, you kind of build up your uh, or responsibility areas as, as you go in the product, which is really cool. Um, yes, when everything is uh, estimated and uh, planned, we move on to uh, the design phase, uh, which is a very part, a very important part of uh, our uh, development cycle. Uh, the idea of the design phase is basically to uh, uh, think through the entire solution uh, on beforehand, uh, kind of get it done on paper or making some uh, proof of concepts before we start implementing uh, something. Uh, so we would we always try to consider every aspect of, of the products uh, like architecture, integrations, and user uh, user interface uh, and so on. There are lots of things to, to go through. Uh, but the well-executed design phase uh, that helps so much for us in the implementation phase uh, as uh, many of the problems that uh, would arise or 
uh, will arise uh, have kind of already been thought through and uh, solutions uh, might or solution has already been uh, figured out at that point. Um, and obviously, uh, unexpected things happen from now and then in, in all kinds of products. Uh, but a lot of surprises will be eliminated during the design phase if it's done properly. Uh, it's also really nice to get some documentation down in the uh, into the design phase, uh, so that uh, especially when the solution is ready and it's going to be maintained, so that we have something to go on. Uh, especially if it's not yourself that's going to be part of the, maintaining the the solution. Um, now we've been at AO for, for many years, uh, and uh, there's not a single team member in our team that has been there since since day one. So it's uh, very important to kind of make uh, make the work be available for, for new members that comes on. Uh, yes, and uh, after the design, it's obviously time to start implementing. Uh, and even though implementation is probably uh, the majority of the work that I do uh, on a daily basis, it's... Uh, probably the least to talk about in this uh, presentation. Uh, after all, it kind of boils down to uh, writing down code and uh, um, yeah, getting the features ready. Uh, and to do that, I and uh, most of the team, uh, we use Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code as our IDEs. We uh, write C Sharp for our backend code and JavaScript for our frontend code. And we use Git together with Azure DevOps for, for our version control. Um, so that's about it for the implementation phase. Um, uh, another super important part of uh, a task lifecycle is the review part. Um, and everything that we do uh, in the product is typically reviewed by at least one uh, colleague, uh, even uh, things like uh, estimates and, uh, and design that we do. Uh, but the most important part, or at least for me, uh, has been the code reviews. Uh, I think that the code reviews are one of the main things that I personally have to thank for uh, when it comes to, to my own learning curve as I started in, in that company. Um, when I'm working with the, such skilled uh, colleagues that I do, it would be such a waste not to kind of share in their knowledge and, and steal some knowledge from them. Um, and when I get to do that, it's it's also encourages myself so much to uh, keep on sharing. Uh, like if I have a review with someone afterwards, I can easily just transform the uh, the knowledge that I got from uh, from a colleague and just pass it forward so that it kind of naturally flows out uh, through the entire team and possibly also across uh, net company and products as a whole. Uh, and then obviously reviews is uh, a very natural send check for, for your solution to make sure that your your code and logic is, is sane enough so you haven't taken too too deep into your own rabbit hole. <laughs> um, yes, uh, and when we have approved everything internally, uh, we uh, get to deploy our stuff to to test. Uh, and at our product, uh, AO are responsible for uh, both both functional and regression testing. Um, and everything that we uh, implement uh, must be approved by AO uh, before anything is uh, deployed into production, basically. Um, and uh, to help uh, AO with this, we have uh, three uh, test instances set up that are used exclusively by them for testing uh, new features and bug fixes and products and, and so on. Uh, it should also be said that uh, we do have colleagues in in that company that are specialized in testing uh, that are working on uh, products where those kind of resources uh, are needed as well. Uh, yes, and the final step of uh, a task is uh, and a product is obviously when it's time to go live in production. Um, and at AO we have uh, a release typically once a month um, that will will and can contain both uh, maintenance work and the new products and features. Um, our deploys are carried out during off hours so that we reduce the uh, the downtime for for your customers as much as possible. Uh, and there are typically one to two team members that are responsible for a given deployment, uh, which then are carried out during evenings. Uh, and everyone in the team takes uh, takes turns uh, on uh, who are responsible for deployment. Uh, and that also goes for uh, really new team members of the team uh, that will get this uh, responsibility really early on, uh, which is uh, which is really cool a uh, cool feeling to to have. Um, yes, yeah, so that was a bit the introduction of uh, all the different uh, task. Uh, processes that we that I usually go through, uh, and uh, then obviously at Net Company and at AO uh, we eat lunch and 
in our team, we're lucky enough that everyone eats lunch uh, together, which is uh, which is awesome. Uh, where we do it at the AU canteen, where we get served uh, some really nice food most of the time. Uh, we get some kind of main course and uh, a lot of variety of uh, smurbrod, uh, salads, and uh, sometimes even uh, desserts. Uh, and during Corona, it's obviously a lot harder to uh, go to lunch together. So uh, we try to hold uh, uh, virtual lunches whenever that's possible. Um, it's uh, it's like still nice, even if you're working from home, to kind of get to talk to colleagues about something that is not work. Uh, and uh, yeah, typical discussion points in our team is. Uh, uh, superhero movies, politics, and, and gaming. And it's funny enough, it's not really... Me and Roshan is probably the two people that are least into these things in the team. Uh, so it's kind of amazing for us how, uh, like, whatever you start a discussion about, it always ends up in any of these three subjects. And sometimes they're even merged into one where people just get super excited about things. So, uh, yeah, that was a little bit uh, uh, side note on how it is to work with... Uh, people that have a uh, really great interest in certain subjects. <laughs> uh, but after the lunch, I usually just go on working on my tasks uh, until around 16 when uh, it's time for me to go home. Uh, I don't know if this uh, image for Danish would be treated as sarcastic, but I do prefer the Danish transportation system in front of the Swedish one. Uh, it's really nice to get around in Copenhagen, in my opinion. Uh, but obviously it's a little bit hard being a Swede right now with the border controls both ways and Corona controls going on. Uh, so it might just will be for the best that we are working from home at the moment. Uh, but hopefully that gets uh, gets better soon. Uh, but when you're working at that company, uh, it's not always that your day ends just because you turn off your computer at work. Uh, because we have a lot of nice social activities going on within our team and also uh, within uh, that company as a whole. Uh, that is truly awesome. Um, Pre-corona, we would all often hold uh, Friday bars uh, at NetCompany, uh, where you could uh, meet other uh, colleagues in NetCompany from other projects, go out on the town and take take a few drinks, have a nice time. Uh, and uh, recently, now during Corona, we tried to uh, uphold that uh, tradition with the virtual Friday bars, mostly within the team, but actually we also had some larger. Uh, virtual Friday bars were uh, across products as well. Um, we also have some uh, product events uh, with the team, uh, typically twice a year. Sometimes we have done this together with AO, and sometimes it's just uh, net company employees. Uh, we usually do some kind of activity, and then we go, go out to dinner afterwards, and it's uh, usually super nice, or it's super nice every time, actually. Um, we also organize some smaller events, uh, mostly dinners or so on for special occasions when someone leaves the team, so when someone joins the team and so on, uh, which is really nice to uh, like kind of enforce the, the uh, team spirit that we do have. Um, we also have some other additional uh, of work activities. Uh, we organize uh, study sessions uh, because sometimes we want to take certifications that are relevant to us in uh, different areas, which is super cool to be able to do with, with your colleagues. Um, we have some uh, after work gaming, uh, we actually did this uh, last Friday where I had the opportunity to crush Roshan in some virtual board games. So that was awesome. Um, uh, we also had uh, a role-playing session not long, long back ago. Uh, I think it was Dungeons and Drag Dragons. Uh, I unfortunately wasn't part of that, but uh, it sounded really fun. So I'll make sure to join up next time. Uh, but yeah, so there is not like uh, only work that's going on when you're a uh, net company employee, employee, which I think is awesome. Um, but yeah, that pretty much summarizes my daily uh, work days. Um, I try to uh, kind of uh, sum up everything with some of uh, the reasons that we really think is uh, is uh, good reasons for working at Net Company. Uh, and uh, first of all, you will uh, get to create value and get uh, a lot of responsibility from from day one, so that uh, you really feel that you contrib contribute uh, immediately. Uh, you will be able to work with and uh, learn from super skilled and experienced colleagues. Uh, there's a lot of focus on knowledge sharing. So your learning curve uh, in the start or when starting in that company and also throughout, it's kind of insane, uh, which I think is really cool. Um, you will have a manager uh, with a similar background to yourself who will uh, basically understand the work that you do and the problems that you might run into and uh, and the solutions that you will have to create. 
Um, you get to work closely with customers to build up nice customer relationships, which is awesome. Um, you get to be part of uh, business critical solutions, so you can kind of see what you make being used by uh, by other people daily, uh, which is uh, really awesome to see. Um, and we have a, a nice uh, career model that is uh, strongly focused on the constant development and growth, both uh, uh, professional and personal. Uh, and then, uh, as we mentioned uh, at the last, you will uh, get to be part of uh, a lot of uh, awesome social activities uh, with your colleagues, not just within the team, but NetCommon as a whole. Uh, so that's uh, that's really great. Uh, and that's pretty much some stuff for, for me. Uh, so maybe we should uh, move on if there are any questions yeah Randy? so uh, i would just say uh, yes we're moving we're moving on to the q a session uh, but uh, if people um, are not gonna continue and uh, and end it uh, here then uh, we'll just say thanks for for tuning in and listening and we hope that uh, we uh, we uh, inspired some people and and uh, gave some good insights into how we generally working uh, work in net company and deliver the projects and also uh, that you got like a live view of how it actually uh, works uh, in uh, in our project at uh, Air Johansson. But yeah, let's uh, move on to to Q and A. Uh, any of the guys uh, still in? Um, in uh, in the call here do you uh, do you have any questions or any comments to some of the things we'll just wait uh, uh, a little bit to see if uh, any questions comes in the silence i'm very bad at chit chatting rosan so i just be quiet <laughs> Yes, so we got one question. So uh, the question is, uh, do you hire only uh, IT people? Uh, I'll try and see. Uh, then we got some more questions, so I'll take them. Uh, try and take them one at a time. Um, so uh, no, we actually don't only uh, hire IT people. That's uh, of course where we started, uh, but we uh, at some point realized that that uh, we need a lot of uh, people in that company to deliver uh, all the awesome projects that we have. Uh, and then we actually f also found out that uh, you may not uh, be the, 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 an expert in, in IT and programming uh, right uh, from the get-go. Uh, but uh, if you have the right mind and you have like uh, the, the logical sense, uh, it could be we have a lot of people uh, who have studied uh, mathematics or uh, physics and stuff like that, um, then we know uh, that if the, the person um, that we want may, maybe want to hire, if the person has the right, uh, the right attitude um, and also the right skills just in, in general when, uh, when you need to try and break something down and, uh, and try and solve uh, something, then, um, then, then we believe that we can actually make that person rise uh, to the occasion and actually learn the skills um, that they may not have, uh, the IT skills, uh, very fast uh, after they have uh, started in that company. So, so now we have uh, multiple different profiles which are not uh, only um, IT people. Uh, yeah, so the next question uh, is uh, what made you want to work for Net Company? So maybe I can start with myself. Um, it is a little more uh, way back than, uh, than Tobias, uh, but he can give his own uh, story as well. But uh, basically I uh, studied digital media engineering, which is uh, mostly about uh, mobile devices, uh, user experience, uh, which of course we also do. Uh, um, which we also have in net company, but but it's not uh, necessarily the primary th stuff that we do. Uh, 
Um, but I actually have uh, a couple of uh, job offers when I uh, before I started. Uh, but the reason why I chose Net Company was because of uh, the re- very intriguing uh, career model uh, that they uh, that we have, and uh, that you actually get a lot of responsibility uh, from the start, and uh, and and you you get to advance and develop uh, real fast in uh, in the beginning. So that's actually why. I um, I started myself uh, in that company. Uh, what about you, Tobias? Um, yeah, for me, I would say that it's um, uh, I mostly wanted uh, a challenge for myself. Uh, like one of the big challenges for me was to uh, uh, do something uh, something different and kind of uh, a little bit unexpected, um, like getting to work in in Denmark across the across the border across the the ocean. Uh, so that was a big part of it that I kind of saw it as a great opportunity to try something that uh, I maybe hadn't thought about uh, from the beginning. Uh, and uh, and then when I talked to Net Company, uh, it uh, it kind of spoke to me how you would basically get uh, get a lot of opportunity to prove yourself from uh, from from day one and uh, and it's something that uh, i wanted to see if it was true and uh, while i'm now working in that company i can confirm that it's really true and uh, my growth has been uh, immense and that was kind of what i was looking for and uh, so uh, the challenge that i put on myself really paid off in my case i'm really happy about that yeah, so we'll uh, move on to the next question. If, of course, you want something clarified, you can just uh, write your um, your de- detailed questions uh, again or afterwards. Uh, so the next question is, uh, when you started working at Net Company, how did you, uh, both of you, experience falling into your new role, uh, both in terms of the way Net Company works and all the new tasks uh, you would have? Uh, so uh, for me, uh, it, it took some time uh, because there is a lot uh, to learn uh, and of course the reason why we have that steep um, uh, learning curve is also because we get a lot of responsibility get a lot of uh, not a lot of tasks uh, in terms of how much time you have but there is a lot uh, to learn uh, in in my case I was very eager and um, I was maybe not the best technically uh, when starting like IT technically but uh, I made sure to learn to learn it and um, and uh, I was very really, very curious uh, and asked uh, like all of the colleagues that I could get in touch with uh, about the, th- the things that I that I didn't know uh, but uh, it actually comes uh, really naturally uh, it, um, it it is a, a mentality in that company that we want people to grow uh, so it is very natural that people get uh, the responsibilities and get the tasks uh, that they want um, usually of course uh, so so for me though it, it was uh, difficult in the beginning uh, because of learning uh, many things uh, at once but once you you get to the point where you can see, okay, now now it makes sense uh, for me, um, and that's even maybe after just a couple of months, then uh, then it really takes off uh, from there. Yeah. What about you, Tobias? Um, yeah. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering why I'm looking to the right all the time, it's because I have the questions to to my right, so I'm not ignoring what Roshan is saying. Um, but but yeah, uh, you you said a, a lot of it uh, yourself. Like when I started, I actually started with uh, Roshan as my my manager and my product lead. Uh, so uh, so I think that I kind of felt uh, a lot of what he described as well. Like uh, there was uh, a lot of new things to learn, which was uh, super exciting. Uh, but it was also difficult at times. Uh, and then it was really nice to have a, a manager that had gone through the same thing back when when he started, because he could basically uh, tell me. Uh, uh, that it was uh, to be expected and uh, that uh, it was just uh, uh, try to um, to overcome it and be eager and uh, try to learn as much as possible and just take the opportunity to, to learn of all the new challenges that you are presented with. Um, and obviously, uh, we I have a, a team of, uh, uh, of really great people around me. So I just kept asking and asking uh, my experienced colleagues and uh, learned so much from it. And uh, uh, there is, uh, there's never someone that is uh, being annoyed by asked question. It's very important in a company that we uh, enforce knowledge sharing and that we want to be helpful to each other. So uh, 
so yeah, it was a lot to learn. So it was a bit overwhelming at first, but uh, the payoff was so great in the end when uh, when you kind of feel like you catch up and you can use all the new things that you learned. It's awesome. Yeah. So uh, the next question is, uh, what are some of the challenges either uh, of you have faced in the projects you have done? Um, yeah, I don't know where to start. <laughs> there are a lot of challenges. Um, but what uh, comes uh, on, on top of my mind, um, it is, of course, one thing is that you, you'll work with uh, a lot of different uh, customers, which can be, um, uh, in, in my case at least, I, I worked on, um, uh, on different projects in, in, uh, throughout my career. And, of course, it's always a challenge how you, how you um, work with these customers, what they expect of a solution, um, how... Um, competent they are um, in, in doing IT projects not that any customers are not competent they are of course uh, very good uh, in the area uh, they excel in but when it comes to IT projects it's very different how um, how customers they they work and and um, how we how we need to help them um, and and a part of that of course uh, technology is, is is always changing so it has also been um, some of the things that I needed to work, uh, work a lot with, um, making sure that I'm up to speed with the things that we need to work on uh, in the projects. Um, but yeah, otherwise, it's we, we always have, have challenges in that company because uh, it, it, it comes with uh, the way that we want to, to get more and more responsibility. So as soon as we get some more responsibility, we get uh, new challenges. So it, it, it keeps coming. Uh, yeah, two uh, Yeah, I obviously haven't worked as as many products as, as you have, so I don't think I have super much to to add here. And uh, I mean, at least for AO that I'm primarily worked with, they are not a very challenging customer in that area. So, uh, uh, so yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't have anything to add. I think. Then we'll move on uh, to the next question. So um, it says, other than strong skills, uh, technical skills within, for example, Java or C Sharp uh, and, and Git or whatever version control we use, uh, what are some skills that are paramount to possess if you want to do well in, in NC? Uh, so yeah, that's, that's a great uh, question. And um, of course, there are a lot of different skills uh, that uh, can be necessary it, it also it, uh, it all depends on on the role uh, of course but if we take the point as a consultant i think one of the most uh, important skills uh, are just being curious uh, and being motivated and, and wanting to learn uh, that that's uh, there may be other things as well, but that's like at least some of the most important uh, things to, to have uh, because we, uh, we are very confident that uh, with almost uh, every uh, background that you may have, either from another job or from, from education, um, you can uh, learn uh, the, the technical skills, the professional skills that you, that you need to have. It all depends on, on the attitude uh, we work a lot uh, with with custom with customers. Um, we work closely with them, so being able to collaborate uh, very good with them, and and also being able to to work in a team um, and and sharing knowledge in the team, and also getting uh, as much knowledge as possible from uh, the other team members. It's it's uh, the most important thing uh, to have. Uh, so it's 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 basically the the eagerness um, and and um, the hunger, if you could, could say that, we really like people who who really want to learn, even if they don't um, they don't have the skills uh, when they start. Yeah, Tobias, anything uh, to add there? Um, no, but uh, not not really. But as you said, like uh, it seems that uh, the the attitude is is the most important part. It actually supersedes the uh, the skills that you would have in, in for example, programming and so on, because that's things that you can can always always learn. But your attitude and your personality is uh, is harder to to learn and change so uh, than, than uh, like uh, skills in, in programming and so on. Uh, and uh, yeah, I know that I've learned so much when it comes to technical skills and so on since I started. So uh, I think that uh, my, my uh, kind of uh, 
willingness to learn and my attitude was even more important than my technical skills when when I got hired. Yeah, so you could say uh, we have multiple examples where we have people uh, who don't even uh, know how to code. Uh, actually, they they know a little bit about programming and the concepts, but they haven't coded uh, like if in in practical terms. Uh, but what we usually just want to see that people can can uh, can understand a problem uh, like a real life problem or uh, a real life project that you may have. And, and, and in the different areas that we work with, that you are able to to think about it in a logical and in a structured way and being able to, to break it down and, and see, okay, what is actually needed. Uh, and you may not even know that from the beginning, but we want to see people being able to catch on. So so as soon as we they learn, that they learn fast and, and, uh, and progress, right? So the next yeah. question. Uh, is uh, in regards to project, what kind of governance model is followed as part of um, of the methodology followed in in that company? Um, I think we uh, can. Can you uh, comment on that, Tobias? Or otherwise, I would maybe uh, hear if uh, you have some some specifics. If you um, uh, if you think um, if, if if exactly what you mean uh, when when you ask about that. Uh, I don't really have. Yeah, uh, I think it is uh, Vipin Vasu. If you can elaborate on that question, it would be great. Then uh, we can uh, uh, we can explain on that, and if we can explain uh, about it, and then we'll move on to the next question. So, how is the typical uh, recruiting process? Um, again, I um, don't know how uh, much we can go into details uh, about that, um, but. Uh, Typically, it's uh, of course where you apply uh, for the job, and then uh, there are some recruiters uh, at uh, um, at Net Company who then uh, take you through the uh, through the process and 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 may of course contact you. So it's basically like a lot of other places. Um, I I won't be going into too many details about that because uh, I'm not pre- I'm not completely sure if I can uh, if I can share uh, that in this uh, form. Um, so, but but of course it's like uh, other uh, job interviews where you called in. And there there are actually uh, different ways to do it. Either you can uh, be co- uh, either you can apply yourself. Uh, sometimes we even uh, headhunt people uh, ourselves um, because we need uh, a lot of talented minds. Uh, and we also do some other uh, events, uh, recruiting uh, events as well uh, to 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 attract uh, the, the 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 best people we can get but uh, but the specifics about uh, what happens after that i i can't go into details about that then you would need to um, contact a net company um, in person um, yes and so the next question is uh, in regards uh, to estimations how do you ensure that the estimations are accurate and and avoid overruns um yeah so so of course it depends on which types of uh, which type of estimation that we do we as Tobias mentioned earlier we do both uh, project estimations which are uh, which are bigger estimations and what we basically do is we try and break uh, break it down as much as we can uh, and then of course we'll uh, so you could say that's some kind of like a bottom-up uh, approach where you um, where you break it down as much as possible, and then you estimate the the bits and pieces that you have broken it down uh, into. You estimate those um, independently, and then see what the total is uh, of that uh, of that estimate. And of course, we also do maybe I I don't I don't remember if that's called top down as well, but uh, we also compare it to to other work we have done so similar work uh, so let's say that we have a new feature uh, with a new button on a on a web page then if we know that we have done a similar button maybe just with some some uh, tweaks uh, in functionality then we also compare those estimates uh, to to get that sanity check so that's um, so that's basically how we how we do estimation so so um, yeah, I would say that like uh, experience from from other parts is kind of at least when when I estimate nowadays uh, when I've been at the project for a while like in our product I 
kind of have a feeling very fast on how long something will take because when you know know a solution uh, well then you have been through uh, different similar tasks before and then you kind of get a feeling on uh, uh, on how long it will take and you can wait back and forth and forth and that's what's good about net company because they also like outside a product we have so many uh, different uh, customers and, and so on so we can like gather experience from uh, from other cases as well, uh, not just within the company itself. So that's really, really nice uh, with such a great uh, experienced uh, company that we are. Yeah, and then we'll move on uh, to the next question. Uh, so how are net company working with improving uh, your processes, tools, events, uh, etc.? So uh, we actually so so what we call like the process and, and the whole structure is of course the the, the methodology uh, as we call it and uh, we we basically have a, a team and we have a responsible um, uh, who 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 daily who do some daily not necessarily daily but they do some ongoing work on uh, on um, on the, on these different tools and best practices and guidelines and so on and then we actually pitch in from different uh, different projects uh, to to refine that so so an example could be the best practice uh, best practices we have uh, for different deliverables uh, we actually get that from uh, the projects so we can see that like how did uh, have they done the design in uh, in the AO Johansson project for example uh, so so I don't know if you um, have some uh, some something specific in mind but it's it's basically that we have some people working on uh, that we have a group who who, who have a focus on that uh, of course uh, concurrently working on their own projects as well but they set aside some time to make sure that we get the experience from the, the different projects and refine uh, the, the whole methodology yeah and then we have uh, the next question uh, that uh, um, that they are curious uh, as they haven't seen any names or photos of women uh, in uh, from net company uh, if we have any comment on that um, and uh, of course that's uh, always a good question and it's actually it just I think it's a, a freakish uh, coincidence that we just don't have it in in our team it uh, we actually have a lot of women uh, in that company I know that it has been uh, has been different uh, in the earlier days we didn't have uh, that many uh, IT people um, who were uh, women back in, uh, in the old days when I uh, started, um, but it's actually very uh, common that we um, have a lot of women working um, in net, not only in net company but in the IT world in general. But in net company also, we uh, we hire uh, men and women uh, on, uh, on on same level. Uh, so so we definitely definitely have a lot of uh, women in net company and really want uh, women in net company as well and we even had some women in my team uh, in our team as well uh, it's just a coincidence that uh, they have um, they have moved moved on from from this project uh, so um, so that's just a, a total coincidence but yeah it's it's really nice to have uh, some female company uh, in the team as well it, it gives another dynamic um, uh, for sure yeah it's uh, too bad that we didn't get this question when i started because then we actually had uh, two women in in our product and that made up like 33 percent of uh, of the team so um, yeah that's uh... So yeah, definitely, but, yeah, definitely we, we want more women um, in, uh, in that company as well. Uh, yeah, so the next question is uh, what kind of test strategy is used as part of the project methodology, i.e. levels, uh, types of testing, criteria, etc. Um, there is a lot to cover if we need to go through the, the methodology in terms of testing, but we can uh, uh, we can tell you a little bit about what we do um, at AO Johansson, and maybe Tobias, you can uh, you can um, support me here and add uh, what I miss. But um, in in our case, the testing is actually done uh, by the customer uh, as of now, and we have begun to help them a little bit. 
uh, we do different uh, testing. Of course, we do uh, the internal testing uh, of our own uh, bits that we uh, that we uh, implement uh, for each task. So we do a lot of unit testing, integration testing, and uh, and so on to make sure that we, at least from our point of view as developers, do uh, that that our work, uh, code actually works. Um, and then we also have. Um, of course, in a lot of projects, we also have um, stuff like uh, Sonar Cube and and so on to make sure that code coverage and all of that is is uh, is as it should be, um, and and do automated testing. So we make sure that uh, when we integrate some code, um, then then it is uh, also then we make sure that it that there aren't any uh, unit test failing. Um, um, then apart from that, of course, there is uh, the functional testing. So testing the the requests, the user stories, and use use cases that uh, that uh, that AO they uh, request themselves. Uh, and that's uh, today it's uh, themselves who are responsible for for testing that. But it could also be us, which uh, we do in other projects. So we do a lot of uh, functional testing, of course, uh, regression uh, testing of. Um, the 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 things that we that may be uh, affected by the new changes that we do, um, and uh, and so on, and we 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 don't have uh, that big of a test plan and, and test coordination as you usually do with a newer project because our project has been live for many years now and it's it's going really smooth so it's not the testing has become a little more informal that than what we usually see in a lot of our new uh, and bigger projects um, yeah but but of course uh, in terms of criteria it's uh, we have our internal criteria for when uh, something is uh, is of the quality that we expect, um, but also of course uh, it's it's uh, AO who have the criteria for when uh, something can actually be approved, uh, and we don't let anything go uh, further uh, into to uh, production uh, bef uh, before they have actually approved it. Um, um, both in terms of, uh, of course, uh, the functional, uh, the functionality, but also in terms of performance and uh, and uh, GDPR and, and what else may may be there. Yeah. Do you have anything to add here, uh, Tobias? Uh, no, I think you described it pretty pretty well. Uh, there's yeah. not much to add. Cool. And um, then we have the next question. So um, I saw from your reports that even during this pandemic, uh, NC managed to increase uh, margins. Has there been uh, huge projects from your customers um, regarding moving to cloud because uh, of home uh, office work? So um, yeah, uh, of course we have uh, we have some some very big projects um, going on, and and I don't think that it's um, of course there are some big projects who who uh, of of course contribute to um, to us growing uh, and. Uh, and going in the right direction uh, in terms of margins and uh, revenue and, and so on, of course. But I think uh, in general, the reason why we keep uh, keep the good work is that we have uh, already before uh, the COVID-19 and, uh, and the whole working from home uh, and the home office situation uh, was introduced, uh, we have been very good at uh, working remote already. Uh, so in a lot of our projects, we already have many people working remote so we have a lot of uh, projects in Copenhagen uh, Copenhagen for example where we have people both from uh, Aalborg uh, Aarhus uh, which is uh, for the people who don't live in uh, in Denmark it's uh, maybe a three hour uh, three to four hour uh, car trip um, from there to Copenhagen so we have offices uh, in those cities where they actually work remote um, and work virtually uh, together with the team uh, all the teams uh, in Copenhagen and uh, we also have people in uh, the other countries where we have uh, offices as well, uh, it can be Norway, it can be uh, UK, it can be uh, Vietnam or Poland, um, where we also have people working uh, remote um, on the projects uh, we have in, in Denmark. And it's not only the projects in Denmark, it's also the projects in Norway and UK and so on. So we actually have uh, people working um, on uh, together um, 
uh, across uh, across countries and uh, across offices. So so we all already know how to work uh, in this way. So so that's maybe of course it always affects it. We uh, still have a lot of projects uh, where we have the physical presence, which we have at AO as well. Um, but but I think it, it, it has been a mindset uh, in net company that this will not be a, we will not uh, let it be a hindrance uh, for us so that's why we um, for example at AO uh, we have made sure that we uh, convince uh, AO that we can make it happen uh, that we can w work virtually where no people sit uh, physically um, uh, at uh, in their offices where we usually sit when uh, when uh, the corona virus didn't hit us um, and and we had we have just uh, been very good at uh, making sure that uh, we not only ourselves uh, internally in our own our own team that we work as efficient as we, as we can uh, luckily for us we work with the technology which can uh, be uh, easily done, uh, which is all done on laptops. So we have teams a lot, uh, present our screens, uh, made sure to, to call each other uh, the same way as we would poke each other on the shoulders when we needed some help or needed to discuss something. Uh, so um, it's, it's more uh, about uh, the attitude and, and accepting that, uh, we that we need to work uh, in this way. And then we have also uh, made sure to to be role models for for the customers as well, and and um, make them feel safe, uh, so they can can also uh, work in the same way. So, for us, I think on a low practical note, we made sure to always uh, share uh, our video when we have any kind of uh, talk, uh, both internally but also with the customer, which they actually also um, started doing after they saw uh, that it actually uh, worked and uh, that it made it more efficient. So, um, so it's small uh, things like that which um, has made it possible uh, for us to 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 keep working as we do. Of course, it, it it's it's of course a little more difficult than it usually is, uh, but but uh, we have accepted that and just uh, uh, made sure to to utilize uh, all the tools that we have um, to work better remotely as well. Yeah, Tobias, any uh, comments for that? No, not really. Cool. Good. Well, then uh, let me see if I can uh, see where we uh, were in the questions. Yeah. So the next question is: uh, Are there any specific vertical net company uh, works or focuses, um, or uh, have major projects? So I think you need to specify what you mean when you say uh, like uh, vertical um, net company works. Um, so I know. If if you mean if you when you say vertical if you mean like uh, different departments or different uh, business areas, then um, we actually started by doing that. We were more focused on uh, we had different departments uh, focused on what technology uh, we wanted to use in those projects. Um, so I worked a lot with uh, with CRM. Uh, back in my days uh, and so the projects which I was uh, in was a lot about CRM but we actually have actually moved away from that because we can see that uh, it, it doesn't make um, not always it uh, it does make sense to 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 split the projects up in in that way uh, we focus more on what is needed for that customer what uh, market are they are they in which type of customer it is and uh, which domain uh, they work with so for example example insurance uh, companies they have some some similar uh, some similar um, requests and some similar needs so so we work more focused on that so people with experience in the in the insurance projects of course we make sure that that insurance uh, knowledge and experience uh, from our side is is, um, is shared and and so we try to 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 match the people based on that in in instead of uh, technology and, and so on. So I, I hope that answered uh, your question. And then we have a question for, for Tobias. Uh, which skills have you gained since you started two years ago? Yes, so uh, so yeah, it's correct that I started two years ago. Uh, it's uh, 
pretty exact. No, it's actually I've been two years and one month now. But uh, but yeah, I don't know where I would uh, where I would start. Uh, I've learned so much. Uh, but uh, just on a technical uh, standpoint, since uh, since I've started, I've been able to uh, uh, grant uh, two um, certifications uh, in on technical skills. So I have uh, completed a, a C sharp certification and uh, uh, another uh, content management system uh, certification. Um, and uh, I'm uh, I w- was ready to take an uh, a short certification as well uh, that unfortunately got interrupted by by Corona because I couldn't write it in Denmark when I didn't travel over so that was unfortunate uh, but so yeah just from a technical standpoint I've uh, learned you learned so much um, but also personally I've grown so much during these two years in a professional manner like. Uh, two years ago, I would never imagine sitting here and having a presentation about something that I did uh, like professionally. Uh, that would have uh, scared me a lot. So uh, both like my confidence and uh, the trust in myself to be able to uh, uh, complete uh, tasks and provide value to to a group of uh, uh, to a group of uh, consultants uh, and uh, developers uh, uh, is uh, something that I like learned i you could say um so yeah it's hard to pick out specific things but i, I think those are two good examples <laughs> yeah then we have a question um, which says how would you define the career a progression uh, or path in in net company so we can't go into too many uh, details uh, about that in this forum as well uh, but uh, what we can say is that it's uh, we um, of course, you always start uh, the same uh, in the same place, uh, and it also depends on which business you want to be a part of. It's if it's the consulting or if it's APS who who manage um, maintenance work and consulting who manages new uh, projects, um, or even some of the internal areas that we have. But um, but uh, it all depends uh, on which. So from from where you start, then at some point you get some um, you get to some points where you uh, need to define which role uh, you want to 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 be in, and then you based on that role, of course, you will get um, uh, you will get to learn um, and and get to advance in 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 that path uh, for that role. But yeah, we have uh, different aspects. We have uh, um, we have different um, you could say events and different uh, things that we do in order to make sure that our people we uh, they develop. But I can't, unfortunately, I can't go into to details about that in in this forum. But but we can at least say that one of the major uh, things which helps a lot with the uh, with the progression is just on the job training. Uh, and that's also what we, I think we made very clear that you get a lot of responsibility uh, from day one. And uh, as soon as we feel that you are ready, then we'll uh, hit you with some more uh, responsibility. Of course, if it's if, if it suits you and, and also if uh, if you feel that you are ready for it. But but we really want people to to realize the potential that they that they have. Yeah, and then uh, the last question, at least for now, uh, is uh, how many projects or clients would you manage uh, concurrently? What size of budgets would you typically be uh, responsible for at each client? Um, and it's 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 very very uh, difficult to answer. Um, it's very very different. It it depends on. I don't think there is like a strict uh, formula for for how many projects or clients that you manage concurrently. We can at least say uh, for us. It's uh, it's um, only one uh, for Tobias at least, and I uh, he has had some work uh, together with AO um, where he needed to help another project as well. But but that was more um, that was not a permanent um, um, a permanent thing, and it's the the same with me. Uh, I have uh, of course um, as a project manager, I have. Uh, uh, the the project responsibility for for the the project we have at AO Johansson, but uh, otherwise I have done some some smaller things uh, on the side as well. But uh, I think that I had uh, two projects uh, conc- uh, 
concurrently uh, at a point uh, where I was a project manager on both. But uh, but it's really hard to say. It it all depends on, um, of course, our own interests. If it's if that's actually what we want to do, it also depends on the size of the pr uh, project. Also, uh, it depends on on um, the engagement we have with that uh, specific customer. Um, and um, yeah. And, uh, and and you can't it's really difficult to to split it up in uh, based on size of budget and and so on yeah yes and then we have uh, the next question do you experience that new employees uh, who do not have an educational background within IT struggle a lot more than those who do in the start uh, how do they do um, and that's also a really good question. Of course, both uh, Tobias and I, we have an IT background, so maybe we're not uh, the best people to answer it, but uh, at least we know a lot of people who have um, who have a, a non-IT background. Um, it, it, it's, it's really uh, surprising um, how it, how it um, it's really surprising how, uh, how uh, little uh, the difference actually is uh, in the end uh, from between a non-IT uh, person and, a IT, and an IT person. And when I say non-IT, it's meaning that they haven't had uh, um, an exact uh, IT education as a background. So some people, of course, may have done something in their free time and some people don't. But we have people who have never uh, touched code uh, in their life. And the, of course, their learning curve in the beginning will be uh, very steep because there is uh, some basics that they need to learn, right? But but we make sure that we give them uh, the environment uh, which they can learn in and also um, give them uh, tools, and make sure that they um, have uh, some, um, some, uh, some study material they can uh, work on, uh, some guides and so on, uh, so they can get like the basics of how it is to, to code and, and program. Um, and and then it's actually just learning uh, by doing uh, in in the projects uh, and in in the end uh, it actually it actually doesn't take that many months before we actually s be begin to compare um, the people without the IT background with the people uh, with an IT background because in the end as for for us in net company um, we don't see uh, necessarily the, the, the professional IT, the, the actual IT skills of being able to code in C Sharp or Java or whatever, as uh, Tobias said before, we don't see as that being the most important skill that you need to have. If you have the right attitude, if you have the right uh, motivation, uh, you can actually learn that very fast. And then it maybe just takes some months. I, I can't say the actual number uh, uh, because uh, I don't know. It all, it all depends on the, the individual person. But uh, in a matter of months, then you're almost on equal footing uh, to to a person with an IT background, uh, so but of course it's it is harder for for a person without the IT background because they need to to learn fast, right? <clears throat> right. Yeah. For for myself, I can just say that uh, like my knowledge uh, on technical parts or like programming in specifics, I mean that just grew exponentially, right? So uh, it goes so fast to uh, to um, to to learn uh, new new things and i mean i can't give an exact uh, science on that of course but it feel like uh, one month in net company was uh, worth like half a year or a year of coding in school or something like that so uh, uh, so yeah it's it's easy to catch up when you have really skilled people around you that can help you uh, a lot and that has like practical experience with uh, with what they do so so yeah yeah, and it doesn't take long, as I as I told before, it doesn't take long before we don't have that label if you have uh, an IT background uh, or not. And uh, some of our best people today, even uh, who have uh, advanced a lot in in that company, they have started as it could be math mathematicians, it can be physicians, uh, or I think I even um, met a person in that company who studied astrophysiology or it, it was called some it's called something like that so it's completely <laughs> um completely uh, out of uh, out of what we usually do uh, and the usual profiles we get in in that company so so definitely um 
there there is not uh, that big of a difference uh, in the end uh, between people with IT background and, and non IT background. Yes, uh, another question. Uh, if you apply to a project manager or consultant role, uh, would you be expected to code? Um, so, of course, if you start as a project manager, it may not uh, be expected that you code because, of course, then the responsibilities you have at that point are, uh, are not coding anymore. But uh, as a consultant, um, uh, of course, yes, you have to. Uh, so, so maybe I am a good example of that because I started as a consultant and uh, am now a project manager. So when I started as a consultant, uh, I I needed to code as uh, everybody else, and that's what you do. And that's also the reason why we we like uh, the people uh, being project managers, but we, because we we usually only want uh, project managers who have that technical background, uh, and and. We feel that some of the best project managers, I can't say all, but some of the best pro project managers uh, are the people who have actually uh, gotten down and, and gotten dirty in, in uh, the actual code um, and, uh, and know the struggles, know uh, the, the, the issues you can, you can face uh, when, while doing that. Um, so, so it's actually being in that developer role, but of course, if it's a consultant, and usually a lot of our roles, it's not just being a developer, but it's being uh, able to interpret what uh, the customer wants and then translating that to some code in the end, of course. Um, so that's, uh, so yeah, that's uh, what's expected um, when, when you're in that company. So yeah, uh, most of the people, of course, the people doing the technical work and working on the projects uh, need to have that. Uh, but uh, but of course there are also other roles in 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 that company. It can be change management, or it can be um, it can be uh, testers and or or whatever. Of course they will will not be uh, expected to be able to code the same way uh, as uh, as uh, some of us others uh, we do. Yeah, Tobias, anything uh, to add there? Um, no. <laughs> Great. Uh, yeah, we'll just, uh, that was uh, the last question for now at least. We'll just give it a couple of minutes, uh, maybe not a couple, just a minute to see if uh, we have any other questions. I think uh, I think that was it. I don't think uh, we the delay would hit us uh, much more than that. <laughs> but um, uh, we would just like to say thank you all uh, for your time. The people who are still in, it's really great to see. Even though we had some technical difficulties in the beginning, uh, which uh, gave us a little delay, uh, it's really great to see um, so many people uh, joining in. And we hope that we uh, inspired. Uh, a lot of you people and that you got some insights uh, into how it is to work in in net company in general and and uh, how we uh, actually do it in one of our, on one of our projects which is of course just one example and it it, it may of course vary from uh, project uh, to project but uh, yeah thanks for your time 